Hello and welcome to business with Smith Co. Hello and welcome back. Well, rather than back, but uh, welcome to business with um, Smith Co. Today we're going to be diving into um, well the main stakeholders in a business. So, um, as you may not know, or, or may know, there are um, actually 11 main uh, stakeholders involved in a business. Um, so, these range from the entrepreneur, the investor, the employer, the employee, the manager, the producer, the supplier, the service provider, the consumer, the government, and interest groups. So, today we're going to look at them. The entrepreneur, uh, the entrepreneur is a person who they spot a gap in the market for a good or service. Then they take on the risk. They take on the risk of both financial and personal. This risk of starting a business in order to, well, generally make a profit. Um, well, that's the aim at least. Uh, in some cases, uh, such as this, this podcast, uh, currently there are no adverts on this, uh, on this channel, so... Well, you know, um, it's not exactly making any money. Uh, so what I'm saying is that this is the sort of risk you're talking about because the entrepreneur is facing this financial risk, and obviously they are having to start losing money that they invested through their savings or a loan, and they also have the personal risk of failure, and that's the point. So first of all, this channel doesn't gain um, four thousand watch time hours and one thousand subscribers within 12 months or for essentially for whatever next 12 months then it's not going to be able to make that profit so any money invested into it and any time and any resources like that then they're going to be lost because obviously it doesn't succeed so but there's also the financial there's also the, there's also the financial risk and then there's the personal risk so the personal risk would be well failure is not always doesn't always make you feel the best and also just the sort of thing where you're like well that's that's you know the failure doesn't actually work that so if you if you have that sort of thing where it's like well you know you want to reach like current i think the views are for the for an average it's like zero to one view per view uh possibly this will go out and um sure maybe by then so the whole channel would have explored and it would be at like two views of a video or three views of a video and that that that'd be great you know that'd be great like you know should that, you know, that'd be great yeah you know i think one of our top videos was uh i think 70 something and then like drops down to like 50 or something, something like that i'm not sure exactly uh at the moment um because obviously uh well i know what also whenever you listen to this will have changed of course Anyway, then uh, looking at like investors, then you see different type of thing because an investor is the person who gives the entrepreneur money. Well, this this is like obviously investors can be more than just that, but in involved in business, uh, uh, the, the investor is the person who gives the entrepreneur money, and this is called capital. This is they give this money so that they can invest in the business and help it succeed because obviously if the business doesn't have as much money then it'll struggle or struggle sorry a lot more because not having the money to be able to you know uh have advertisements for example if you want to advertise um if i want to, i know this is this seems very kind of self-centered but if, if you want to advertise these videos for example then you'd have to pay over money and they take that risk and if you don't have that money in the first place like you i don't then you know you can't you can't uh, it's not as easy to succeed so obviously if an investor invests in the business then they can help it succeed however there's a catch the investor is not just here to you know have the joy of seeing that they've helped the business succeed they do expect a return on their investment now there are two types of investors uh there's banks and other investors that may give you a loan now they generally the way they do things is they expect a repayment with interest however they do not take ownership of this 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 type of this this type of investor now the problem with this area is that it does tend to come with some problems because 
the entitlement is to the money with interest. So if the business fails, that doesn't matter. You still have to pay it. And if you take out a big loan and then your business fails, well, you're stuck in a bit of a problem because if you can't pay them back, then, you know, and most banks will not go down this route, but some investors that go down the route of giving a loan tend to be, can be quite, well, vicious. And uh, and some banks and uh, other financial institutions do tend to have high interest rates. So be wary of that. But there's another type of investor. This other type of investor uh, will offer capital in exchange for shares in the business. They would then own some of the business. However, they would also receive reasonable dividend from the business's profits. So the business, well, its profits must be shared with that investor. Now, obviously, if they have, let's say, 10% of the business, then only, yeah, they don't get as much as you do. But if they do have more, then in certain business areas, they actually have a right to make certain decisions. So that's another thing you might want to be wary of. You know, if you're starting a business and you know you want you want you're having these investors, and obviously, I understand fully why you wouldn't want to go down the route of banks because they're a little more risk. Because obviously, an investor at least you know if your business deals fail, they won't be coming after you with when you have no money. You know, if you've invested all your savings into something and the next thing it fails, and then you're like, well, how am I supposed to pay you back? money I don't have, you know, then it's just easier that way. But do beware that, you know, don't give away too much because then they might want to go down routes that you do not. Um, then you come to employers. Now, an employer is a person who hires employees to work for them and pays them using wage or salary and in other cases, other ways of paying. Um, an, an entrepreneur, apologies, may become an employer as their business grows. For example, if this YouTube channel was to grow and expand and suddenly was to be able to, you know, was looking at, well, how about maybe we have video every single day? But that's a lot of pressure. Uh, although actually, first of all, you might want to be thinking, you know, because if, if it's making money, then maybe do it full time yourself. Um, and let's say you say, well, we, 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 we've already expanded by videos, but now now it's actually getting tough now because we want, we want to make more videos, but even now that we're doing this full time, it's, it's a bit of trouble. So then you go, okay, well, how about we, we, we get some else in? And then that's the thing. So currently it's a one man show, but in the future, possibly, you know, businesses do, to, do this sometimes because currently uh, this is a one man show and uh, a lot of businesses do start out like this because it means you have no real, you know, you have costs such as lighting, heating and other things, but especially if you're providing a, a service, your costs can sometimes be a lot lower to start the business and also to provide the first few um, services to the uh, customer. And that means that, but if you're employing employer, sorry, if, you, if you're employing employees, then you can go down the right of, well, you know, you can provide more services um, and your business can grow more. And that means that, you know, you are able to provide a lot. Now, the employee works for an employer in return for a wage, and they are, they are protected by employment law. And this employee usually signs a contract of employment at the outset. Employees take direction from managers and can offer ideas and suggestions to boost sales. Uh, for example, a uh, little internet company, well, it's not little, it's, it's quite massive, enables employees to spend 20% of the time by developing personal projects relating to the business. So obviously, you know, not personal projects really, but they're still they're related to the business and that means that, you know, you can have that ability. Now a manager is someone that the entrepreneur decides to hire. This is when, like when a business is becoming quite successful, an entrepreneur might decide to, well, not retire, but, um, you know, take a bit of um, stress off the, off the life and start, you know, maybe, you know, doing a little less work and start, you know, um, arranging for their work to be put out to other people. And one of the things that they can do is they can hire a manager, which essentially can replace them as not necessarily. Like, for example, there are CEOs, which are, they are employed by the board of management, 
what was it, board of directors, um, to run the business for shareholders. Um, a manager arranges the business resources, making decisions to achieve an entrepreneur's goals for the business and help it succeed. Now, a manager may manage part of a business or they may put it in charge of the whole business. So as I said, you know, employee, employee entrepreneurs, sorry, um, you know, may decide, well, the business is quite big now. I can employ somebody else to do my job. And they might not be left work completely, but they might just want to take a little stress off. Uh, I'm repeating things now. So I guess that would be a good place to leave this episode of the podcast off. And we'll be back um, next time. We'll be talking about producers, suppliers, service providers, consumers, governments, and interest groups. Join us then, hopefully, um, you know, and, uh, you know, basically, see you next time.